Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to combine uncertainties for a calculation. This is something you might need to do in your project, but you also might need to do in your final exam as well. So let's get going. Now, let's say you have an equation relating different values and you want to find out the total uncertainty in one of your values. And let's also say you know the uncertainties in the other values. Then it depends on how your calculation is made as to how you handle these uncertainties. So in a calculation, you might have to add, subtract, multiply, divide, raise to a power, or even a combination of these. And we have different rules for combining the uncertainties depending on which one of these you're using or which several of these you're using. The first one to look at then is if we are adding or subtracting in our calculation. So uncertainties and calculations involving adding or subtracting are combined in the same way as combining calibration, scale reading, and random uncertainties for a single value. Now, if you don't remember this, check out my previous video on combining uncertainties for a measurement. But let's say we have a formula relating these four variables, w, x, y, and z. And let's say we add w equals x plus y plus z, or w equals x minus y minus z. So this one's got addition, this one's got subtraction in it. Then to find the combined absolute uncertainty in w, then we would make this equal to the square root of the absolute uncertainty of our quantity x squared, plus the absolute uncertainty in our quantity y squared, plus the absolute uncertainty in our quantity z squared. Now, of course, if you only have two variables in your formula, like x and y, then you would stop your square root after the delta y squared. And I will be uploading future videos showing you examples of how to do this, but for now, we're just going through the theory. The next one is multiplying or dividing. So if your equation has a multiplication in it or it has a division in it, then you're gonna do this thing here. So to find the uncertainty using the fractional uncertainty, first of all, you could use this relationship. So it says, that the combined absolute uncertainty in our quantity w divided by the quantity w itself is equal to the square root of the absolute uncertainty in our quantity x divided by x all squared plus the absolute uncertainty in our quantity y divided by y all squared plus the absolute uncertainty in our quantity z divided by z all squared. And again, if you only had two measurements with two uncertainties, then we would stop after the delta y over y squared. Now, all this seems like a bit of a mouthful and it looks quite complicated, but there's a way to simplify this. And the way we simplify it is if we use percentage uncertainties instead. Because remember we said in one of the previous videos that fractional uncertainties are not very useful. And so if we want to use percentage uncertainties instead, then we use this relationship here. So this says that the combined percentage uncertainty in our quantity w is equal to the square root of the percentage uncertainty of x squared plus the percentage uncertainty of our quantity y squared plus the percentage uncertainty of z squared. Now, if your question was asking you for an absolute uncertainty instead of a percentage uncertainty, then all you would need to do is convert back from percentage uncertainty to your absolute uncertainty. And the way you would do that is you just take the percentage of whatever your measurement is. The last thing we'll look at for combining uncertainties in a calculation is if you're raising a value to a power. So to determine the uncertainty in a value raised to a power, we can use the following relationship. Now this is using fractional uncertainties to begin with, and let's just assume we had a value of w raised to a power of n. So if we wanted to find the absolute uncertainty in this value of w raised to the power of n, we divide it by the value of w raised to the power of n and make this equal to the power n times the uncertainty in our value w divided by w itself. But again, this looks quite complicated. So again, we can simplify this using percentage uncertainties. So let's look at that. To make things easier using percentage uncertainties, we can express this as the percentage uncertainty and the value raised to the power of n is equal to the power of n times the absolute uncertainty in w divided by w itself times 100. So remember, it's a percentage uncertainty. So we will need the times 100 part in there as well. And just like before, because we would be left with a percentage uncertainty in our value of w, we could then convert back to an absolute uncertainty if we needed to. So we would just take the percentage of our measurement. One last thing to note is that just like we saw earlier, when uncertainties and measured values are combined, a fractional or percentage uncertainty in a measured value can be ignored if it is less than one third of the fractional or percentage uncertainty in another measured value or the biggest measured value. So remember that if an uncertainty is less than one third of the other uncertainties, then we can ignore it because it's too small and it's not going to have a significant impact on our final uncertainty anyway. That's it from me guys. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, give it one of these and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.